And I'm just going to bring up Robbie Bonham now. All right, thank you. Thank you. Genius. I've only just this second realised we've no microphone. Is that no. right? Yeah. All right, I didn't realise that. Uh, my throat's a bit fucked. This gig's a bit fucked, to be honest, because the, the last comedian did all my best jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only joking, which is... If they were my best jokes, then we'd be fucked. Um, yes. I would have lost my comedy card if I hadn't. Uh, I am filming this on my little camera. It might pick up the odd audience. Audient, I don't know. Uh, if anybody doesn't want to be on camera, because I might put it up on YouTube if it's funny. Is a uh, first time for everything. Um, uh, uh, the, uh, if anybody does not want to be identified on film, maybe you're supposed to be in work, or you're you're, you're here with an old flame and you don't want the, the wife to see. If um, if anyone doesn't want to be identified, just let me know now. You, you can get one of these off me. Uh, obviously, we're here for the next twenty minutes to an hour, depending on how this gig goes. No. I, fuck, I only brought four. It wasn't... They're actually cut-offs from a, a burka factory. I didn't want to waste all the material. I just needed me pockets for that joke. I can take my jacket off now. Actually, no. Fuck, I, can't. I just remembered I, I've... Uh, Drugs in your pockets. Um, the, um, I'll leave it on. If you prefer instead, actually, is can go with the kind of the, the more traditional blurred face. <laughs> Don't worry, it's not 20 minutes of this shit. I have jokes. <laughs> they were my two best ones. <laughs> Let's see. So. Um, <coughs> Hell yeah, it's just a quick shot. I don't, because I don't know who's here. Who here's from Dublin? Hey. No, not even quite half. And who's from elsewhere in Ireland? One lad. <laughs> <laughs> now I have to ask where you're from, because you're the only one. Where are you from? Tullamore. Tullamore. Yeah, Tullamore. <laughs> hey, Tullamore. I was only thinking about Tullamore last night, because I realised it's the one place I've never been. <laughs> well, not in the whole time. <laughs> no one's ever won a comedy club there, so. It's not a great loss. Um, I mean, to you. To Tullamore, not to you. I uh, don't know what the fuck I'm talking about now. It's turning into less of a comedy gig and more of a very public nervous breakdown. <laughs> you don't even have a mic stand to hold on to for dear life. To find something else during the course of this. So, um, and who here is from, uh, anyone from England? No? Okay. Where, 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 where? Okay, is everybody from Earth? I just want to get... Yeah. Yeah. Humans! Fucking <laughs> humans, yeah! Yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm from Dublin. Uh, who, the Dubliners, who's north side? Yeah. Yay. Whereabouts, roughly? English. Famous, oh fuck. <laughs> I shouldn't have let slip, I have drugs in my jacket. <laughs> Messy. I mean, that was just a joke. <laughs> the, um, I don't know, my brain's a drug, fuck it. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, I, I, I'm, who's, uh, yeah, it's, I'm north side as well. I, anyone here from Ballymun? No. No, just famous, that's all right. Now I'm from Santry, I just need to make sure before I tell any jokes about Ballybud. I'm never up in Finglas, so I'm safe enough. Um, it's, uh, could we're, you and me, Mr. Finglas. What's your real name? Sorry, I know it's not Mr. Finglas. Daly. Daly. Daly? Is that your first name or your surname? No, second name. Your second name? Yeah. Is that your middle name or your surname? <laughs> so, just Daly. So, yeah, just Daly. Okay. You, don't, you think that would be the perfect name for me to come up with some brilliant joke of, of worth playing his name? I'll be honest with you, my life's not going that great at the minute. I can't afford to be thinking of this shit. <laughs> um, Daily, and you are you're very well. Yeah, but you know, we're, we're proper Northsiders. We're used to proper dangerous tracks. We're, we're, we're used to the kind of stabby type of tracks. You know what I mean? They're kind of... You're probably one of them. I've no idea. I, I'm only saying... On north side, because I did a gig on the south, I did a gig over in Dalky the other night on the south side, 
And when you see a gang of their tracksuits, you have to laugh at the fuckers because <laughs> they just don't have threatening down to the same art. <clears throat> I got off the, the dart and docky. There was a gang of tracksuits hanging outside the, the darts. Yeah, there's people in them. <laughs> they were hanging outside the dart and they were carrying bags of cans looking for somewhere to drink. You know, like proper knackers, right? Here's the difference between south side and north side. One of them was also carrying a bag of ice. <laughs> a fuck. It's not proper knacker drinking, that's... I don't mind roughing it for an evening, but I'm not drinking like a toast knacker. Stir it back with the lemon! <laughs> Dermot, Dermot never made it back. <laughs> Got beaten up by a gang from Bray and they shoved his lemon up his hole. <laughs> Slice. <laughs> the lemon, I mean, not, not his hole. <laughs> So I don't like I don't like the north side. I, I got town is worse. I hate coming into town. It's just it's the worst fucking and I've gigged all around the fucking planet. <laughs> town is just I just you can't go outside for a cigarette anymore without costing you three more cigarettes and six euro in change. What the fuck is going on? It's very expensive to be a smoker. And what annoys me when 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 you're approached on the street here is you know they're kind of ah. Just, just kind of, <laughs> they're completely unaware there's a recession on. They're still looking for money under 2008 prices. <laughs> yeah, could you give the euro? Fucking euro! <laughs> Fucking, if I give him a euro, he now has a euro. I don't. <laughs> Walk home. <laughs> and I'm not giving my hard earned money to someone to spend on drugs when I haven't even got money to spend on drugs. <laughs> uh, you can't say no to them because then it leads to more conversation and a fight and eventually fisticuffs on the Lewis track. It's a long story. Um, another gig. If you're approached, and this is for any tourists particularly in Dublin, if you're approached where you're here to change, here's how you deal with them. Don't say yes or no, it just leads to more shit. What you need to do is you need to confuse the fuck out of them. And I discovered this completely by accident. Just talk back to them as if your singer-songwriter Tom Waits. <laughs> it just cuts through the shit like you wouldn't believe. There's not much of a defense for Tom Waits suddenly talking to you. And I discovered it completely by accident just because I was pissed off. I kind of started what I was saying on a cough, so it just kind of came out like him. You know, <coughs> this guy comes up to me and kind of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually feel their pain when I'm doing that voice. Um, Tell me about your hair on. <laughs> Sorry, I'm grappling. Uh, you know, they come, on, yeah. come up to me, yeah. can you give me some change? And something inside me just snapped. I just went, I can't give you any change. <laughs> I can give you some difference. <laughs> what? You know that sleepy look they get? <laughs> Save with a slice of lemon and the bitter taste of a faded dream. Ah, <laughs> oh, you're just fucking weird. <laughs> Tell you to deal with them. You have to have a lot of confidence to pull it off. That's the only thing. I've never even done that in real life. <laughs> you gotta try that shit on a junkie. <laughs> you get stabbed. <laughs> I don't know, I, I find it hard to hang around the town. You have to, when you're doing gigs, you're hanging outside smoking and I'm going off for a wander to have something illegal. I, 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 <laughs> um, you know, I've lost me trying to talk. Oh yeah, it's the drugs. Yeah. Uh, it's like the um, like I, I was doing a gig up in there. Uh, there's a comedy club up in, up in uh, what do you call it, Australian Bar on Parnell Street, the Woolshed. And I was standing outside. This is a few months ago. And I saw this couple walking up towards me. Now, he looked dangerous, right? I knew this guy was trouble, but his girlfriend looked alright. 
And it kind of threw me. You see a lot of that, like, complete fucking scumbags, and, and their girlfriends are gorgeous. I don't know. They actually look like they're their carers. <laughs> I don't know what these women see in these men. Maybe they know the apocalypse is about to come, and they need a guy that can get them shit. <laughs> Gonna get that from us fucking middle class. I don't middle class. What am I saying? I'm working class. That's it. Well, it's old class. It's the same. It's, um, <laughs> It's funny how working class contains the highest percentage of people that don't work. <laughs> um, I don't even know where that came from. I never even knew what was going inside my bedroom until I was 35, for fuck's sake. Still living in my ma's. 46, that's embarrassing. Free gaff Tuesdays. <laughs> I'll get back to that anyway. <laughs> I just leave you alone with me ma, and I go about my business. <laughs> no, um... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but this couple were walking towards me, and it threw me because I thought, well, if this girl is well dressed and presentable, he's a grand. And next thing he put a syringe on me. I kind of wanted me to give him all his shit, so. All my shit, so, uh. Oh, he she didn't have any. <laughs> um, and all of a sudden, you know, his girlfriend is really, oh my way, he's brilliant. You know, all the time. <laughs> and when you have, when you're threatened with a syringe, you have to think very fucking quick. What do I do? Do I, do I just throw me wallet and me stuff at him? Well, you have a wallet. But you know what I mean? <laughs> do I just throw me shit at him and, and, and run and hope he doesn't catch up? Do I just run so I at least have me stuff? And hope he doesn't. What do I fucking do here to, to not get fucking pricked by a syringe? And I had to think of my feet, and the only option left to me was... I punched her in the face and... <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not... I'm not telling you that in a bragging kind of way, but You have to follow the logic of it. It was gonna cause the most amount of commotion on their side, leaving me free to escape. Some healthy residual psychological energy released for another day. <laughs> Sorry that I have a problem with women, I try not to let it show. But... <laughs> I've only realised lately I'm the problem. After about the sixth woman in five years ago, what? Why am I getting these psychos? <laughs> No, it's all right, realise it's me, it's a grand woman, it's, it's just, there are, are things, I don't even know why people would live together, what the fuck is that all about? <laughs> I have no joke for it, I'm just working on it as a thesis. <laughs> Change society for the better. <sighs> it's kind of funny when you find yourself standing on, on a stage, well, two crates, <laughs> when, uh, <laughs> Find yourself standing on a stage in front of 30 or 40 strangers with a, a slight erection <laughs> where, where you realise that the second you've said that they've all momentarily glanced at your cross. <laughs> I don't have an erection by the way, just for anyone out thinking well he's a tiny cock. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, my sex life is largely internet based, so <laughs> it's not the length that counts, it's the, the bandwidth. <laughs> I might get to women in a minute. I bought this drink to use as a prop throughout the gig, I didn't think I'd finish it 15 minutes before I could go on stage. I might look a bit stupid just sipping from an empty glass and every time I make a punchline you're going, is he proper mental or what the fuck's going on? Which is like, you know, and I've noticed it's gone. And I've already got one thing not to hold tonight. If I put this down, I fucking nothing. I'm naked in front of you. More jokes, all right, grand. Um, <laughs> yeah. Put it out of the way, I feel faint now. So, uh, I, I don't know, it's, uh, I guess it's off my chest, because there's a fairly healthy amount of women here, so it's not going to feel like I'm picking on yous. <laughs> Does that work as an excuse? <laughs> um, okay, before I get into this, ladies, right, I have a bit of a reputation on the comedy circuit. A friend of mine was in a comedy club in Galway recently, and he got talking to uh, a punter about comedy, and my name came up in conversation. Because I'm huge. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> 
tree we have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this punter said to my friend, have you ever heard of that Dublin comedian Robbie Bonham? That's me. <laughs> 13 years of this shit. <laughs> uh, and my friend went, yeah, I know, man. This is what this punter said about me, because he'd heard of me and he'd seen me. He said, he's very funny. He's a misogynist, but he's very funny. Now, two things about this statement. One, it's not strictly true. I'm not very funny. <laughs> and two, oh, thanks for laughing at that, Dave. <laughs> and uh, two, I might have to explain misogynists for one or two people. Can somebody tell me what a misogynist is? Someone who hates women, thank you, sir. It's always a man that answers that question. I've no idea what that is. <laughs> it's like the women are just going, I'm not giving him any more ammunition than he <laughs> Someone that hates women. Now, I need to make it very clear before I do any of these jokes. I don't hate women, I'm just on to you. I've learned a lot. 46. Fuck me. It's not... The, the whole equality thing is very hard to nail down because we're, we're equal but we're not the same. There's, there's, there's like... Oh, like... There's a few double standards you just need to let go of really first. Like, for instance, women's prerogative. And correct me if I'm wrong, anybody on this, from all my experience, as far as I can work out, Women's prerogative basically means that a woman has final say on every decision in a relationship. Am I right? Yeah. 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 Even the men said yes. Yeah. Women, you can change plans at, at the last minute. Lads, you might think you, do, you know what you're doing next Friday. You get there, discover a surprise, surprise, she's moved the goalposts again to, to include an 18 hour visit to her parents in fucking Ennis. <laughs> <laughs> Men, you ever change plans on a woman at the last minute? Fucking don't. Because <laughs> you will never hear the end of it. You just start whinging and slapping your chest and it's all... Yeah, 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 the church was booked and all our friends came from <laughs> <home."> <laughs> <laughs> <Right, your mentals. laughs> you wouldn't laugh at that joke if you knew how true it was. <laughs> So yeah, I'm single now. <laughs> I uh, became single at, at 40. As I say, I'm now, I'm now 40, after 10 years, so I'm now 46, and the last five years has been a fucking adventure. Because oh. <laughs> you go from, you're in it, I was last single when I was 29. I'm not saying I knew how to pick up women and what have you, but it was a lot easier. Plus, back then I thought I was completely straight. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 40, 41, and you're fucking suddenly left in the single world, it's fuck, where, what? You know, I, I don't know, I didn't shag anybody till about a year after I broke up with my ex fiance because you need to leave a period of grace, just so it, it looks like you cared. <laughs> and, uh, I found myself on my 41st birthday, I don't know where you go, I ended up in some club up on uh, Georgia Street and uh, I usually get to laugh, I don't know why. <laughs> no, I, I did meet a woman that night, now um, she was a little bit taller than me, a little bit broad shouldered. <laughs> Quite large hands, if I'm perfectly honest, but she was she was gorgeous, she was dressed nice, everything right down to the scarf. I couldn't fault the thing with her. We got talking and we clicked and we ended up kissing and she asked me back to her place. We started messing around, eventually I slipped my hand down the front of her underwear. And I am not fucking kidding, she had a vagina. <laughs> <laughs> going on out there? <laughs> Think you know what you're getting and then you get hoodwinked at the last minute. <laughs> that was an awful joke. <laughs> I wrote that joke five years ago, but in the last five years there's been so much progress among the LGBT community that that kind of joke is probably now borderline offensive. I should really cut it out in me set. Especially as I've enjoyed the pleasure of one such person since. But anyway. Um, the, uh, a week and a half, lads. 
fucking week and a half. That's how long it takes for, for your, your arse to bugger back down to normal size. <laughs> um, now, this is the moment where I would take a swig from my drink to make it look like I was very blasé about that last punchline. The magic's ruined because of my own poverty and inability to coordinate two drinks during a break. <laughs> Looking to be bad because I know I have a bottle of coke in it. Anyway, um, that would be my reward for after. What the fuck was I talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, what, what time are we at? Oh, that's good, right? I've got another two and a half hours. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, I just, I, I, I can't, I'm trying to figure out. Like, it's hard being single at 46. It's a little bit like being single at 16. Like, lads, do you remember when you were 16, right? And, uh, you there's all this peer pressure from your mates to get your hole or lose your virginity and by the time you've left secondary school everybody else is lying to everybody else about having ridden somebody you don't even know what it means yet and it's kind of there's an awful lot of pressure on your mate to feel abnormal if you, you haven't fucking hooked up with anybody it's like that at 46 but instead of losing your virginity it's treasons <laughs> you know, kind of people come up, you know, you know how to treat them? No. What, are you fucking gay or something? <laughs> We're all fucking at it like it. And they give you abuse. You're walking down the street hand in hand with your chosen lover and they're standing across the road shouting, Look at the two of them! <laughs> on their own! <laughs> Wankers! <laughs> it's just a lot of pressure. Sorry, I'm trying to ask myself certain questions why I'm still single at 46. I mean, does that work? Yeah, it is, yeah. Is this about to collapse? Keep going! Is this about to collapse? Keep going! <laughs> the last thing Robbie said just before yeah, yeah, yeah. he drowned in a city centre venue. <laughs> oh, that's getting it. <laughs> Maybe with a bit of luck, it would come crashing down with tons of water just as a fire was breaking out behind the bar. <laughs> that's everything out. Hallelujah. <laughs> What the fuck I'm talking about? This, this is the drugs wearing off, that's what this is. I actually thought the water was a vision because I do sweat a lot when I'm drugs. It's, um... I couldn't ask for a glass of water, please, thank you. Time for a glass of water. Sorry? I can, I, can, I can afford a fresh glass of water, it's, it's free. It is free. Sorry. I was, I was taking shit, I got 20 cent on me before I asked for a pint of water, because some folks do. <laughs> Not this, this place isn't fucking nice enough to have the cheek to ask you for a pint of water. <laughs> I'm not done insulting everybody yet, I've still got another seven minutes. <laughs> um, what else can I talk about? Uh, women! <laughs> <laughs> no, I, just, I, I can't do relationships, they're a full-time fucking job. I don't do full-time jobs, I do this for 20 minutes a night. If I could do relationships for 20 minutes a night in front of 30 people <laughs> in, a, in a cellar that was about to collapse, <laughs> happy enough, but no. It, it would be great if it was more like a job. It would be great in a relationship if you could just hand in two weeks' notice <laughs> as soon as you want out. Do you know what I mean? You don't have to go through months of passive-aggressive silence <laughs> or acting like a prick till she hates you enough to break up with you. That's how we do it in Ireland. It'd be so much easier, wouldn't it, just to go, uh, Listen, babe, um, I'm finishing up with you Friday week. I got a much better offer, I'll be honest. Uh, she, she wants me to start on the Monday, so I'm just... Oh, he's very impressed with that, were you? <laughs> <laughs> My drink problem. Maybe I am a misogynist. Fuck it, I don't know. It's, it's all part of me. Like, I'm 46, I'm single, and I'm wondering, where's it gonna go? What, what's 50? Is 50 when you have to go gay now, is it? <laughs> kind of, your friends come up to you at 50. What? You're 50 and you're not even gay yet? What are you, gay? <laughs> no. I suspect I am. <laughs> this would be a weird gig to come out at properly. It really would. That's when the flush will happen. Then you know God's angry. <laughs> um, so I was trying to reason out why I'm still single at 46, and maybe there's something I'm not facing up to, and I'm kind of 
I, sometimes I think I was supposed to be gay. And uh, I hate starting with lines like that to a group of people that have only just minute walked in. <laughs> going, what the fuck is this? Has this random person just got up with his jacket still on? Not because I have drugs in the pocket. <laughs> and, and did this person just get up with his jacket on and announce to a pub full of strangers he's gay? Pretty much, yeah. But I put in 12 hours of stage time leading up to it. Did I say 12 hours? <laughs> and 12 years. Fuck's sake. That's what, it, that's what yeah. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. It's, uh... I think the fact I'm 46 and still wearing a Spider-Man watch probably is <laughs> uh, no, no idea. I think, I, sometimes I think I was supposed to be gay, like this, the signs were there when I was growing up. Like the music I liked and the books I read and, and the, the, the getting beaten up for being gay. <laughs> no, was, but no, no, I, I'm, I'm straight. I am. <laughs> well, I'm straight in that I just like women and post-op transsexuals, uh, pre-op transsexuals, really good cross-dressers, twinks, <laughs> really poor cross-dressers, and gay men. But I have no interest in straight men whatsoever, I'm not into any of that gay shit. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that worked better than it could have. Worked a lot worse than it could have as well. I don't know. I've only got off. Well, that water has really put me off now because that might keep me awake. <laughs> Sorry, it's been a long day. I have to get up early in the morning for a hospital appointment. Don't worry, it's not serious. <laughs> I'm just taking this very moral to my life. I could go on for another 45 minutes, but I, I genuinely only have five. Cheer up, not one. Oh, when I said that. What's going on? I'm, uh, I'm one of these. Uh, uh, recovering alcoholic. I don't know if I'm a recovering alcoholic. I'm, I'm a not drinking anymore alcoholic. It's very, it's very hard to find out you're alcoholic in this country. The standard's not that high here. You gotta fuck up really bad for another Irish person to pull you up without your drinking. Do you know what I mean? Rob, we think your, your drinking's getting a bit out of hand. We're starting to embarrass the lads when we're out Saturday night. We think maybe you need to cut drink out your life altogether. Sure, come on down to the pub, we'll talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> they give you these leaflets to see if you're alcoholic, right? It's 20 yes or no questions. And if you answer yes to three of them, you're fucked. <laughs> right? Now, I answered yes to 19 of them. I think the only one I said no to was the one involving murder. And even then, I can't be 100% certain. <laughs> it was a lot of blackouts. But... The first two questions, I'm not doing all 20 questions here by the way, this isn't a surprise AA meeting. <laughs> you can still drink while you're listening to me, it's cool. But the first two questions on the leaflet is stuff everybody that drinks does in Ireland. It doesn't make us alcohol. Question one was, have you ever drank on your own? <laughs> Who hasn't? We have a drink on your own. You know, before you're, you're meeting your friends on a Saturday night, you know, or, or a, a pint before a job interview. <laughs> it doesn't... <coughs> None of you have ever been to job interviews, have you? <laughs> They're never acting. <laughs> doesn't mean you have a problem. Well, question two, right? This got onto a leaflet in Ireland. Question two was, have you ever missed work because of drink? <laughs> Industry in this country grinds to a halt every Monday morning and most Fridays and the odd Wednesday just to break the week up a bit. <laughs> boo hoo, me drink is affecting me work. We only work to pay for the fucking drink. <laughs> Trust me, if you gave up drink tonight, you could walk out your job by next Monday. Pursue your dream to be a stab up comedian. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going so well. But anyway, they need proper questions on those leaflets for Irish people. Question one before you get anywhere on the do you have a drink problem. Question one should be something like, have you ever pissed into the wardrobe of someone you vaguely you know at two in the morning? Then you can go, yeah, maybe me drinking's becoming socially awkward. <laughs> Oh, 
close to the bone there. <laughs> Someone's had a man pissing their wardrobe recently. And I mean wardrobe, it wasn't a euphemism for anything else. I gotta stop this fucking my head gone. Anyway, I should get off stage now really, for the torrent. <laughs> well, at least they didn't cheer that bit. Hey. Don't shut up, don't you? <laughs> don't encourage them. Um, no, I have to go now. Uh, so, before I go... Women! <laughs> no, this is, my, this is the last... This is just... And this is specifically for... This is specifically about Irish women, so... Non-Irish women, don't worry about this. Irish women, you have the capacity, like, no other nationality to nag. Like you wouldn't believe. I broke up with my ex six years ago. I still get ghost nags. You know what I mean? Like even now, if I'm having a shower, I can still hear her voice in my head telling me to wash particular body parts properly this time. Which, to be honest, is information I can still use, so I don't mind it. But what happens is most, most Irish men after about year two, we just become able to zone out the nagging involuntarily. And ladies, you probably find you have to come up with more inventive nags for them to penetrate our nag force fields. <laughs> like if we see a weird looking nag fluttering towards us, we will kind of go, what's that? What the fuck is that getting in? Bollocks! It's fucking... And you... Like the last two weeks I was with her, she just nagged me non-stop. See, this is what you did. She would nag me about weird shit just to try and get through to me. Like the last two weeks she was nagging me about stuff I refused to use. You know, like credit cards and then dental floss and toothpaste, and soap, deodorants, the right hole. I just, I just gotta calm that shit out. Alright, that's the best perception I've had to me anal sex joke. <laughs> but it was only a joke, by the way, just in case I was going to get lucky with anybody here after the gig tonight. I'm not into anal sex. I've never... It seems a bit pointless. Well, with a woman. <laughs> There's a perfectly nice hole just two centimetres away. It's not like she left her vagina over the far side of the bedroom. <laughs> you could tiptoe across a cold floor in your bare feet just to fuck it. It's right there. I'm just saying I've never, I don't, I'm not into anal sex. I might try it once. If she's really hot and her penis isn't too big. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, uh oh, I'm not, uh oh, I've been Robbie Bonham. Thanks for listening to me. He's been the funniest person I've had on this stage and, uh, since I came here, and I can't think of a better way to finish up and use him than having Robbie Bottom. So, thank you, Robbie Bottom. Thank you. Thank you, Circus Sessions. Woo. Thank you, Dave Hoppins. Dave Hoppins!